have the equation 2x minus 3 equal to negative 25. So step one is to simplify. There's no way to simplify this. It's already as simple as we can get it. Step two, collect all terms with a variable on one side. There's only one term with a variable, so we're done with step two and we can move to step three. Collect all constant terms on the other. So our variable is on the left-hand side, so I wanna move any constants, any terms with no variables to the right-hand side. And I'm gonna do this by adding three to both sides. And the reason we do this is because now on the left-hand side, I have negative three plus three, which gives me zero. So on the left-hand side, I'm left with two X. And on the right-hand side, negative 25 plus three is negative 22. So we now have all the terms with the variable on the left, all the constant terms on the right. And the final step is to divide by the coefficient of the variable. The number in front of X is two, so we we'll divide both sides by two. So now on the left, two X divided by two is X. And on the right, negative 22 divided by two is negative 11. So I have my solution X equal to minus 11. Let's look at another example, slightly harder. So once again, our first step is to simplify. And once again, there's not really any simplification we can do here. So step two is to get all of the variables on one side. This time we have x's on both the left and the right. So I'm gonna subtract x from both sides. And I do this so that the x's on the right-hand side cancel and I'll only have x on the left-hand side. Negative three x minus x would be two x. So the left-hand side would be two x plus five. And then the right-hand side is just negative 27. Step three is to collect all the constant terms on the other side. So I need to move the five to the other side and I'll do that by subtracting five from both sides. When I do that, the fives on the left-hand side cancel. I'm then left with a two X on the left-hand side and a negative 32 on the right. My final step is to divide by the coefficient of the variable, so I'm gonna divide both sides by two. And when I do, that gives me an X on the left and a negative 16 on the right. So I have my solution of X equal to negative 16. My next example is slightly harder. So this time I have parentheses, so I actually do need to deal with step one. And I'm gonna start by multiplying through and clearing the parentheses. So on the left-hand side, I have negative, and then in parentheses, x plus 10. And distributing my negative sign gives me negative x minus 10 on the left. On the right-hand side, I need to distribute the two. Now it gives me two x plus 10, and then plus the 31. I can still continue with step one. I cleared my parentheses, but I do have like terms. On the right-hand side, I have a 10 and a 31 that I can go ahead and combine to get two X plus 41. I can now move to step two, collect all terms with the variable on one side. I can either move the negative X on the left to the right or move the two X on the right to the left. One of the biggest mistakes I see in math in general is messing up with signs. So I like to make it easy by keeping everything positive. So we're gonna add X to both sides. When I do that, the X's on the left cancel out. I'm left with a negative 10 on the left and on the right, I now have three X plus 41. I then wanna collect all my constant terms on the other side of the equation. So I'm gonna subtract 41 from both sides. When I do that, the 41's on the right-hand side cancel out, and I'm left with negative 51 equal to 3x. Finally, I need to divide both sides by the coefficient of the variable, so I need to divide both sides by 3. And then that finally gives me negative 17 equal to x. So you can see that this example was a lot more complicated. We actually did have to go through all four steps, and in fact, we had to do step one twice. Let's do one more example. This time I have x over six plus two thirds equal to three x plus four. One of the things we could do with step one that I said was to multiply through by the least common denominator to clear the fractions. We can see here that the least common denominator is 12. So I'm gonna multiply everything by 12. So now that I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and simplify. x over six times 12, well, one six times 12 is two, so that would be two x. 2 thirds times 12 is 8. 
And then 3 fourths times 12 is 9. So on the right hand side, I would have 9x. And since I've done that, I've made this problem a lot easier. I no longer have to deal with the fractions. So step two would be to collect all the variables on one side. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. When I do that, the 2x's on the left cancel. And I'm left with 8 equal to 7x. Step three is to collect all the constant terms on the other side, but we've already done that. I already have all of my variables on one side and constants on the other. So we can skip to step four and divide by the coefficient, which is seven. And so I now have my final answer. Eight over seven is equal to x.